16. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? Anne was going to be here this morning to talk about the bread of life, and I'm thinking she must be ill. But Bread of Life is another ministry that we support through um, Trinity United Methodist Church. We support them financially, and then we also have um, volunteers, uh, Anne for one, who um, goes every, um, I think it's every third Saturday to um, help hand out um, clothing and um, to distribute food. That mission is supported um, financially, I believe, by the UMW and um, other groups within the church. Um, a good place for us to involve ourselves. Isaiah 48, 7a through 8b. Share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Will you come in? Amy asked, for, asked me to talk to you about Habitat for Humanity today, and uh, I got involved with Habitat for Humanity, I don't know what, four or four years ago. Uh, Alan Herman is the reason I'm standing here right now because Alan, Alan sits on the board of Habitat for Humanity and invited me uh, several years ago uh, and uh, he said, you, you'll really like it. He said, I know how you like construction, and, but Habitat for Humanity is more than just construction. There's, there are many venues that a person can apply their talents and gifts to. Habitat for Humanity was started in 1976 by a small Christian family in Georgia. And uh, it grew, and then in 1984, Jimmy and Rosalind Carter went on a mission trip uh, abroad uh, and really gave Habitat for Humanity International that boost to get it out in front of a lot of people. And Habitat for Humanity is not just uh, a national com company, uh, it's, it's worldwide. Uh, Habitat for Humanity basically provides uh, better homes, better housing for low-income uh, families. And uh, since I've been involved with Habitat, uh, I think we've built uh, four or five homes and uh, and typically, uh, we provide these homes, but it's not a giveaway program. Uh, these homes, the buyers, we actually sell the homes to the buyers. They do become qualified, and there's a long list of qualifications on the ability to pay, the ability to pay your bills, uh, the amount of income they make, their existing home, and then uh, they also have to volunteer uh, 500 hours of their own time, uh, 150 of those hours before they can even qualify for us to start their home. And then another 350 hours after we've started their home, they have to volunteer. Uh, so, and then when their home is built, uh, it's not given to them. It is, they work, they work for it and they pay for these homes. Uh, they are given some incentives. Uh, one of the incentives is uh, that uh, a lot of this work that's done on the home uh, is not really valued. They're receiving a, a kind of a value added uh, product, but also they're also receiving a zero interest loan. So it, it really does my heart good to be able to provide something to someone who has worked for it and that wants it. And, and uh, I've been to a few of the home dedications where when the home is finished and the family's there and we dedicate the house, uh, 
there's not a dry eye in that room. I mean, these people want these homes, and they've worked hard for them, and you know they're going to keep them. I think that we've had how many homes? Down nine? Eyes open. Eleven? Eleven or twelve. Eleven or twelve, and I don't believe we've had a home go back. We've not taken a home back in, in how many years? Gosh, they started in the nine. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a wonderful organization, uh, and it has many different uh, subgroups. One of the subgroup is a Brush with Kindness, and a Brush with Kindness, I've been involved with that a little bit also, and uh, different needs of people in the community are looked at, and uh, and we basically, two of the Two of the Brush with Kindness projects that I've done are, are handicap ramps. And, uh, and we've gotten a lot of involvement. We've gotten involvement from this church. A lot of you have helped uh, on this last project that we had. Uh, and I've had people come up to me and say, well, Vance, I don't know anything about construction. And I said, you don't have to know anything about construction. Can you, can you bake a cookie? Can you serve lunch? Can you sweep? You know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to be involved. And uh, what brings me to another uh, thing is, is our fundraising. We are kind of limited on how many uh, fundraising projects we can have each year, but our big one is our restore. And we have a restore here in Clovis that the items at the restore are donated, and then we turn around and sell these items back to the public. And, uh, and you can participate in that by either donating your time, or donating items, or going down and purchasing items. And that's over at Nathan and Gideon. Um, Randy, uh, who's not here today, also is involved with Habitat. He works at the ReStore. Um, but it's just a, a really great organization, and I guess I should back up a little bit. It's a Christian organization. This organization started on God's principles and God's principles are within Habitat, and that's how they do business. And that's just, that's just awesome. And I really felt, you know, I could be a part of this and really bless some people. Well, guess what? Guess who got blessed for working with Habitat? Uh, I'm doing some, I'm able to do some things from God's blessings for Habitat because, because of Habitat. I've been blessed, my family's been blessed, and it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful organization. Thank <laughs> you.